Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of the Own the Moment podcast. My name is TJ Lasig. I'm your host here at OTM, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, the robot himself, the man that has been quite active in the new Herzig Bot channel in our Discord, dropping all of the knowledge when it comes to what we are seeing in the marketplace right now, Mr. Justin Herzig. Justin, how are we doing tonight? Fantastic. We are in the middle of a, another little boom the past 24 hours. We've seen prices starting to go up. We've seen excitement around all the challenges. Um, we are post NBA All Star Game, and I think uh, I think there's going to be a couple more uh, hidden gems, a couple more sneak peeks around the corner that Dapper Labs has planned over the next few days or week. Yep, yeah, we're finally starting to see a little bit of a fallout from the crazy weekend that was NBA All Star Weekend. Obviously, we had the Rising Stars pack drop. We've had the Seeing Stars pack drop. So there's a, a ton going on, and of course, the hot topic right now is also the new kind of rules that have been placed on the marketplace. And we've also seen those kind of changing since they rolled them out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into to kind of what, what we've seen in the marketplace, what some of these new rules are that we're working within, how we've seen them from when they were first implemented to what they've changed it to now. We're going to talk about the, the rising stars and the seeing stars and the challenges with each of those. And then we're just going to talk kind of generally about the, the concept of supply and demand. And obviously, there was a ton of new supply pumped into the ecosystem over this past weekend. So we can talk a little bit about how that impacts the market, both short term and long term, and our thoughts there. How's that sound? That sounds great. Let's jump in. Great. All right. So let's start off with a bit of the state of the marketplace. So I, I have here the, the kind of original rules that were put in place. So just to, to take a step back after the pack drop on Sunday, we did not see the marketplace reopen. I know that a lot of people were, were not necessarily thrilled with that. It was, it was down for, I think, over a full day. And then when they came back, it came back with some, some restrictions on what we could do, right? It wasn't just open up and everybody can go and automatically try to buy that lowest list ask. And the, the original restrictions were you can only purchase one moment every two hours. You can only list one moment for sale every two hours. And then you can delist as many as we wanted. They opened it up to delist at first. But then after that, it was one moment every 10 minutes that, that you could delist. So really just, I mean, my perspective on their move was trying to, to slow down the action and, and essentially avoid opening the marketplace and having to immediately shut it back down or trying to avoid that experience where you've got literally thousands of people trying to buy the same lowest ask moment. They've since moved it down to, are we down to 15 minutes now? I believe at this time. So it's been kind of slowly moving down in terms of how frequently we can make these purchases. I know that you had some, some original thoughts on this when it came out. So curious if you could kind of recap your original feelings on it and then also have you have you changed your thoughts at all as you've seen them move from two hours down to one hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, et cetera? Yeah. Um, and I think overall, um, let's first, I think, identify what those problems were, why this was put in place. Uh, so one of them was likely, and you know, we are surmising, we're kind of making some assumptions based off what Dapper Labs kind of said or hinted towards, but uh, there appears to be that there's a, some technical challenges and just the influx, the amount of people, the amount of t attempted activity was you know, damaging the network, um, hurting transactions, and to the point of they just weren't sure from a technical standpoint whether or not they could you know, keep a sustainable market uh, from a tech standpoint. So I think that's one thing too, is as a result of those tech challenges, uh, what kind of happened is anybody could list their moments for sale pretty easily, but the act of actually trying to buy was a bit more challenging. And a lot of that has to do with that kind of couple minute delay between making the purchase, seeing whether you got it and so forth. So you would have, especially after a new pack, people just throwing those moments into the marketplace. And since they first and at most only got one, you say, okay, I'm listing it and people list it. And you're just going off whatever that lowest price is. That lowest price may not actually be accurate because that may have already sold a little while ago, a few minutes ago. And you have 10, 20, 100 people trying to buy those lowest asks. So majority of people aren't making analysis for what should my price be when I put this in the market? Should I compare it to other moments and so forth? 
they're likely just looking at, okay, what's the lowest going for? And let me just undercut that just so I can try to sell this and make my quick buck. And that, you know, as a long-term stance, like it destroys the market. It creates a artificially scarce market where it looks like the supply is a lot greater than the demand because the demand is not coming through as actual true um, because only a certain people are able to make those actual purchases. So you know, they decide, okay, let's change to where we can do the you know, once every 90 minutes. My initial thought is I understand this is a band-aid solution. Um, and so I wasn't trying to evaluate the decision by Dapper Labs, but just trying to evaluate what the impact on the market was. And I feel like it initially had a negative impact. And so what I see is that you have a lot of people who are still fairly new, not really willing to invest completely, significantly complete these challenges. So they'd rather just sell that moment that they just got in the pack. Um, normally that wouldn't be an issue because you would have high volume collectors who really identify that value and they scoop it up. But the amount of low volume collectors will always be larger than that high volume. And so it's kind of more that are putting their, you know, their SSs and their, their seeing stars or rising stars for moments, you know, then we have the unique buyers that are trying to purchase. So I think that led to a inflow of people putting them for sale. And because you could only purchase one every 90 minutes, you couldn't have someone just say, hey, like, here's the value here. I'm going to sweep the floor. And so that saw those prices kind of drop. And we saw the rising stars. We saw seeing stars. We saw great values. What happened then is eventually the people who wanted to list it, that supply kind of leveled off because you only have a certain amount of people that are actually getting them and are putting them out. But there's likely more demand, as we've seen, of people that want to buy, but just weren't able to because of the limits and so forth. So that's why I believe we've now seen this strong turn upwards, where as the supply kind of stays still, people put those moments up. Now you've got the demand, the buyers actually making the purchases, and that floor just kind of keeps increasing. And so I'm not making a, ju you know, a, a judgment on whether or not this was the right decision by Dapper Labs. I don't have anywhere near enough insight into what their technical stand and situation was to, you know, uh, pre to push this decision. Uh, but I did just want to provide the people in the, you know, in our uh, Discord my thoughts on why I thought these prices were low and that this wasn't a, uh, a true representation of the market, but more of just a temporary thing and that we'd expect prices to start going up once that supply influx slowed down. And I think that is what we started seeing. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. So I think, you know, to put it into an example, right, there could have been, say there were four rising star moments that you felt were all at a good value. And each of those had 25 people that were looking to just sell each of those four moments at, at a lowest ask, right? So there's 100 of them total. Maybe in the past, someone like yourself would have gone in and bought one or two of each of those moments at a good value, which would, and maybe there's 10 people like yourself doing that same thing. Now you were only able to make one of those purchases every two hours. And so for that reason, the lowest ask remained kind of artificially low for that, you know, 24 hour period because it just took longer for people like yourselves and other higher volume collectors to, to be able to scoop up those low asks. So it definitely right. makes sense in terms of, of how, that broke down there. And I think, like you said, we we broke down the walls of, of those lowest asks. And now we've seen the market, especially for the rising stars and the seeing stars, trend very strongly upward over the past, say, 24 to 48 hours. And we are, we're recording this on Wednesday night, for the record. And so just from a most simplistic standpoint, I hear the argument of, no, this is fair because you can only list and buy at the same rate. So it's a fair market. But the truth is, how many people... You know, how the people who have the rising stars and seeing stars, what's the max they want to list? Well, the max they have is one. So they're able to list their max. But like you and I, what's the most that people want to buy? I want to buy at least 12 or nine to complete the challenges. I probably want to buy more. So the people who want to sell are selling as many as they can, which is just the one that they got from the pack. But the people who want to buy are limited to just those one every nine minutes. When in reality, I'd be trying to buy nine, 10, 12, 20, et cetera. And uh, that's where I think you can, when, once you have that thought of, okay, what are the people in the marketplace actually wanting to do if there weren't these limitations, that shows us to, how can we get ahead of this? Because if we think out 12, 24, 36 hours ahead, when people, all those buyers are able to make the purchase they want, now it makes sense why we saw this upswing in the market because the supply kind of just stopped because they did everything they could. The ones who wanted to sell, they put it out there. But the people who wanted to buy just took them longer to be able to make those purchases.
Yep. And I, I do think that that things actually worked out pretty well just because we we avoided that that nightmare night where you're trying to buy everything and every single transaction that you try to make does not process. I think we can all agree that that's one of the worst experiences that that we can have at Top Shot. So and I like how quickly they, you know, scaled back from from two hours. I was worried that that was going to be in place for a couple of days or even a couple weeks. And it's good to see that. And I wonder if they will go back to that after pack drops going forward, because that's when they've seen the the highest volume or, you know, if the 15 minute type of thing is, is going to work after pack drops. So, so we'll see how they handle it forward, but yeah, I, I think, I think that's, I think that's the summary of all the marketplace updates. Were there, were there any other relevant things in terms of that? Otherwise, we can just jump into what we're seeing with these rising stars and seeing stars because that's been definitely the, the high volume transactions going on. Yeah, I, I think that summarizes. And also a shout out to Dapper Labs. Um, they have a person on staff who is basically their genius economist. Their person who, before they make any of these types of decisions, builds out simulations for how he or she thinks that the market will react. Um, if we have the opportunity, we'd love to have that person on our show on a pod because to think through what I've heard, his or his or her, I'm not positive, uh, success ratio is significantly high compared to like you know predicting of what will happen. Um, so we'd love to get that person's kind of just uh, you know pick their brain. Yeah, that would be awesome. In, in the poll we ran the other day, the the people wanted wanted someone from Dapper Labs to come onto the podcast. So. Think about any, 40% any, or something. Any like dapper that. folks out there listening, please, please reach out to us. We would love to to have you guys on the podcast to to talk about some of this stuff and dive a little bit deeper into some of the things that that are going on behind the scenes. We'd love to, to understand that. All righty. So so let's transition here to the seeing stars and to the rising stars because this has been the the hot topic in the market. And I, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. So if you are listening to the audio version, I'm going to go ahead and share here. And what I have on my screen right now is the pricing trends of the seeing stars and the rising stars. And from a, from a challenge perspective, we have two challenges that have been announced. So we have seeing stars one, which is for the Kevin Durant reward. And we have rising stars one, which is for the Anthony Dave or Anthony Edwards, sorry, reward. We also have sp- you know, pretty good speculative reason to believe that there's going to be a seeing stars too, which would be the moments that are not involved in Kevin Durant. That's for a LeBron James reward. And then also have rising stars too, which is going to be for a Zion Williamson. And so, yeah, I just wanted to to share this. And, and what you can see is that over the past literally day, maybe day and a half, we've seen a, a, a massive spike of like, 2x almost or or one and a half x from each of these sets and i think that that has correlated a lot with what we talked about earlier of people that got these packs were looking to sell out of them and then collectors like ourselves that that were looking to get involved in the challenge and the reason that that we didn't see this uptick was until after some of these the the two hour limit was gone so we were never going to see it rise that quickly but you can definitely see how things have have significantly trended up here. And I'm going to kick it to you in a second to talk about your thoughts on the challenges, specifically on the seeing stars too, as it relates to LeBron James. But I, I, I did want to call out because I think, I think I'm a little bit potentially more bearish on, than you on this. Maybe it's just because I, I have not purchased these yet. And I just, here, here's what I'm going to show. So next thing here is I'm going to show Cool Cats 1, Cool Cats 2, and The Gift, which to me are the three comparable, most comparable challenges to seeing stars in terms of their affordability. And I mean, what I see here is that we saw the same kind of craze early in the first couple of days of these challenges where prices just spiked to a super high level. They eventually kind of normalized, came down, stayed relatively flat for a while. And then you can see them drop off the cliff after the challenge is complete. And so my my call out or my question, right, is is where where on these curves are we right now? Because it's possible that that it's just the first spike and and maybe they're still going to go up for the next couple of days. But I do think that it's likely based on the trends we've seen in the past that that there will be a pullback at some point in time here. And so 
for people like myself that have not yet bought into these challenges, I, I am not rushing in to do so because I, I don't want to get, you know, caught spending 4K on a challenge where the reward is only going to be worth 2K. So that that's just, that's my somewhat cautious outlook on the challenges. Again, not that, not that anyone can't compete in them. I still think it's a, a great fun part of this, but I'm I'm just wary that prices have really, really increased in a short period of time and will probably continue to do so. So I, I'll just caution against kind of FOMO buying the top because right. I think that's that's where we can get ourselves into trouble. But uh, let, me, go, let me kick it over to you and see what, what you think. Let's go back to your cool cat scraps that you have there. And so for those yeah. listening to the podcast, as CJ said, these really do have sharp incline. They start up climbing up very quickly and then for the most part just are kind of gradual declines. And agreed. The key question is, where in those charts are we? And I think there's actually a way for us to calculate this or at least come up with an estimate. Um, and the way that I would recommend we do that is so you can look from a historical stance. If you look, look at this Cool Cats 2, for example, we can see, uh, I'm going to try to zoom in on my computer to see uh, the numbers. Um, the total cost started around 1000 It got up to as high as 5000 but it really stabilized around 3300 And then after the challenge, the cool cats kind of moved down to about like, I don't know, maybe 500, five to six, 700 um, in total. So what I would be curious is I want to figure out, okay, what is my estimated value of the reward? Because in this cool cats example, our, you know, the reward that Anthony Davis ended up being, what was it? 800, 900? I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. it, op it opened around 800, 900. Yeah. Okay, so if we say 800, 900, and then we say that the cool cats kind of hovered around like 600 um, for the after the challenge, we're looking there at around 14, 1500. So when the cost to acquire equals the actual and value of it, that's where how we can kind of figure out where we might be. So 14 to 1500 here was very early on in the process in, in the map. They ended up stabilizing to 3500, which means the value of the challenge reward plus the finishing cost of each of those, the most of the challenge was actually about 2x, 2.5x that. So the way that I take that to our challenge now, here, TG, if you want to go back to the, like, say, sea stars or rising stars, the way that I would estimate it is if we can figure out what the challenge reward value is going to be, as well as the price, the value of each of the moments after the challenge, we can compare that to see, okay, we think that the peak is going to stabilize around maybe 2x, 2.5x that. And so we can dive in, but like, let's say for that seeing stars two with the LeBron, I think that's going to be worth around 2,000. Um, I think that um, the post-challenge value of those is going to be a little below 2,000. So I think the cost to acquire is actually going to end up around 4, um, if it's around 4,000, that's kind of your break even, maybe somewhere between 3,500, 4,000. If you expect they're going to get the 2x, 2x that, we're talking the cost to acquire at 8000 And right now, we're looking at 4000 Now, this is no guarantee that it's going to get that expensive. But if we're just basing off those previous challenges, I wouldn't be surprised if the total cost to acquire these for the LeBron, say, those 12, ends up being around seven, 8000 And for the KD, I think I'm thinking it's going to be worth a little less or so. Maybe that ends up around five to 6000 and if that's the case, we can then use this as an example to say, okay, here's where we think we are on those charts. We know it's eventually going to go down, but if I can acquire it early on, then there's value in me completing it. Or if I acquire it at some point and not too late, I can either decide, hey, I'm not spending too much to do this. I'm doing it for the fun. I'm also having a chance at the cereal. Or maybe I decide I'm going to try to find the peak when this gets to maybe that 7,000, 8,000. Maybe I decide, you know what? I don't want to wait the 40, 50 days for LeBron challenge. So I'm going to flip mine and make my profit there. And I think that's the way that none of this is a guarantee. And I completely agree with TJ that at some point, it's going to be not worth it to buy them all and complete the challenge. But I also am a strong proponent of if you got him before this, well done. That's where I was buying. If you buy right now, be cautious. But I still think there's an opportunity but just be smart about it and you know, take this as your part of your process when you think about how you approach these challenges. 
Yep. And I'm also curious with, with the length of these challenges, right? The, the Durant one was announced. It's three weeks long. Then we speculate that the Le- LeBron one starts after that. Is that going to be another three weeks? Like, are we looking at, at six weeks here? And then how many, you know, six weeks is a, is a lifetime in Top Shot land. And how many new shiny objects are we going to see over the course of those six weeks, right? I mean, Cool Cats was all the rage. And then seeing stars and rising stars, Cool Cats are, are absolutely down in the dumpster right now because everyone ran to the new shiny objects, right? So Cool Cats 3 is likely to release soon. Are people not going to care about Cool Cats 3 or are they going to say, oh, you know what? Seeing stars prices are through the roof right now. I'm going to liquidate some of them and then go for the Cool Cats. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around. Yep. This is the, the first time that we've seen so many different challenges, I think, going on at the same time. It's always kind of been like one. Cha- and also, I think we can pretty clearly see here with the with the fact that the Seeing Stars 2 is more expensive than Seeing Stars 1, that there are at least enough informed buyers out there that are aware that the LeBron challenge is likely to come. That, and I'm sure there are still plenty of people that have no idea the LeBron challenge is coming, but uh, can definitely kind of see that that the market's a little bit more informed, a little bit sharper just in terms of seeing the next step. So really curious to see what's going to happen. And this is something that we're going to continue to keep an eye on. Neil in the Discord continues to provide updates on all of these challenges on a daily basis. We'll, we will be continuing to do that. I know that you know he's texting me on the side like, I can't believe you didn't buy all the Seeing Stars yet. I've got all 24. And uh, yeah. He he's got all twenty four of them. I know that you have at least at least twelve, right? Of the, the seeing stars too. I've been actually taking a more strategic approach and not buying all across the board, but going hard on individual ones. So a few Anthony Davis, a few Giannis, a few you know, places where I thought that there was value, um, yeah. because I was limited by those those sixty the two hours and so, right. and so I had to make smart you know sharper decisions. And sometimes I felt that it was better to, and I'll go through my process in a couple minutes about how I chose which ones to buy. But, but yeah. to your point, if we had the gift challenge right now, I don't think anybody would really be paying attention to it. Um, and where that where I'm kind of getting at is, I think the player that the challenge reward is, is going to be very important in challenges going forward for people to want to complete them. Um, I think LeBron, even KD, like those are strong enough names that people are going to want to complete them. Um, for others, if it doesn't have that strong, you know, player name brand, it may not get the level of, you know, excitement. And I think the second is for the seeing stars and rising stars, because almost all of those, especially the seeing stars, um, almost all those players are like high value players to begin with. People are a little more comfortable holding on to them because it's moments they'd want to hold on to anyways. And you'd expect that like you're not missing out on appreciate on market appreciation elsewhere because if the market as a whole appreciates those ones should too. Yeah, I think I think that is definitely a big differentiator in these challenges compared to say the Cool Cats, right? Where the Cool Cats moments were were fine players, but all of these are liter- literally all stars. That that's actually what they are. So yeah, a- anyone that you're collecting to complete this challenge is somebody that you're going to feel good about holding long term because they're they're one of the best players in the league. So yeah, I, I think that that you know it's going to be continue to be a topic over the next couple of weeks, continue to monitor these prices. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do kind of what you said and, and look for, for values as I see them. I've, I've picked up some of the rising stars as well. I thought that some of the, the rookies and the rising stars were, were going at decent prices. So I, I, I made some moves on that front, but also feel that those challenges are going to be quite, quite expensive to complete, but we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on there. Do you want to talk through some of the the specific seeing stars stuff that you had? And then after that, I'm gonna I'm gonna give some thoughts on Lamello particularly, because I think that he's an interesting case study given the Lamello first moment, the Lamello rising star moment that exists, and then of course the upcoming Cool Cats Master Lamello that we are expecting in the near future. Yep, that sounds good. And so I'll walk through both some rising stars and seeing star stuff. Um, let me make this full screen. Um Um, all right, so this here is for the seeing stars, and I've kind of hinted towards a little of this earlier, but this is the way that I kind of um, outlined my process for whether or not I should be buying and which ones I should be buying of the seeing stars. So for the people listening to the pod, this is probably a very visual if you have the chance to go to YouTube and watch, um, but I'm just kind of walking through what my spreadsheet looks like. So 
first off, I want to make sure like, okay, what are my assumptions? And I like putting those down on paper because A, it allows me to more clearly test them and you know align to them. And also when I'm doing a hindsight, when I'm doing analysis where I'm doing like a, a deep reef later, um, it'll help me kind of test like, okay, how did I do with my assumptions? So first here assumption is that I think the LeBron projected value um, for the seeing star reward will be about $2,000. Uh, that's based off that they're Usually we've seen challenges that around 60 to 70% of people are completing them for the um, more general challenges, the more, you know, the non like legendary ones. Um, so that means we'd see maybe six to seven K um, total circulation. LeBron slash 7,500 is going for 1,500. So I gave, I gave a little bump from there. And so that's how I'm going with the basis of 2K. Uh, second is I have to make an assumption for what I feel will happen to these moments after the challenge when they no longer have challenge utility value. Um, you know, I started off with a, with a 2x multiple, I kind of bounced it off a couple of people in Discord, ended up getting to a 1.75x multiple. And so what I mean by that is that, um, oh, sorry, multiple of compared to the slash 15,000 prices. So we know that these are out of 10,000. We know that these have a little extra coolness factor because of the logo, the seeing star that accompanies it. Uh, but once it has no utility value, how does it compare to those slash 15,000 prices? And that's where I ended up going with a 1.75x multiple. So in this chart, we have the 15,000 prices. Um, in this column, the two italicized ones don't have them. So I had to make those up based off other players. Uh, we had the current low ask. This was, I think I posted this in Discord early yesterday. Um, so early Tuesday. So that's where these prices are based off. Um, and then post challenge guess was that, um, you know, the post challenge price is 1.75x times that 15,000. What does this give me? Okay, well, we know the cost to acquire, and that's just based off the lowest ask in the market. I then get what I believe that the post-challenge value of those moments are going to be, because if I'm acquiring, if I'm doing the challenge, I've got those 12 moments, moments, I need to know what are they worth after the challenge, and here I have it at around $1,900, and then I have the LeBron projected value. So what we take is, okay, what is in my portfolio after the challenge? Well, I have $1,900 worth of those 12 and then I have $2,000 for the LeBron projected, so about 4,000. And what's my cost to acquire? Well, it's about 3,700. And so that's where we get to what the actual challenge value is based off those prices. And so this is where I'm like, okay, at this point, these are my assumptions. There still is a value to be buying and completing the challenge, not even accounting for that I could you know, obviously sell at some point throughout if I feel that's a better value. But I'm right now just trying to isolate for it doesn't make sense for me to complete this challenge. Um, and obviously, we can play with some of the assumptions. We saw that if I change that the post challenge prices are only about one and a half X, that's about my break even point. Um, and so the last thing here, and I'll pause for you know, if, TJ, if you have any thoughts, but I then have what the current value is for me to decide, okay, which of these players do I think are actually a value? Well, you know, they might actually increase or decrease more throughout the challenge. And in this example, AD was the greatest value um, because what I was doing is just comparing the low ask price, the time for AD versus slash 15,000. And it was only a 2.5 X multiple versus if you go to the extreme, you look at Sabonis, he's trending at almost five to six X for his slash 15,000. So there's obviously utility value baked in, but uh, this allowed me to say like, Hey, I want to make sure I get my AD, my Steph, my Dom, my Giannis ones early on. Um, and that's where the kind of playing, um, you know, from impacting my strategy from a short-term stance. Yeah, I think it's a great breakdown. Makes a ton of sense. I like how you you look at the current values of each of the individuals as well. You can see with some of the people like Sabonis, like Rudy Gobert, that their current prices of their seeing stars are pretty much entirely utility-based according to that challenge. So I, I think it makes sense. And I'm also I'm looking right now at, at Neil's updated data, the, the seeing stars total set is currently 4,255. So, you know, already up what 550 bucks since when, when you did this analysis yesterday. And for those that, that are not in the discord, this is the kind of stuff that Justin is, is bringing to the discord. You can, if you're watching on YouTube, you can look in the, the description, you'll find a sign up list for our discord. We, we currently have a wait list going. We are trying to, to get people in as quickly as we can but you know we've built built up. I feel like a, a nice little community there of a ton of really really sharp people. A lot of awesome discussion 
going on around Top Shots. And so we're just trying to slowly filter people in, but uh, r- really been been impressed with yeah yes you'll get justin's analysis and and challenge data from us and things like that but almost more importantly i mean you get to hear a lot of thoughts from a ton of different people that that are all very serious collectors very serious investors in top shot and i know that I, i've learned a ton just from from the other folks in there so definitely recommend if if it's something that you're interested in and but but i will say you know th- this is not the discord where you come in to ask when the pack drops are or to complain about the site not working like we we don't we don't talk about any of that stuff there so uh, that, that's probably more for <laughs> more for i don't even know but yeah just wanted to to throw that out there you can check out the link and sign up for the discord wait list yeah oh, that sounds good and uh i know we're trying to keep uh this to be a fairly shorter pod uh so i just wanted to give a quick kind of summary here what we've also seen for the rising stars um, and so this is another thing that I kind of posted more detailed analysis within the Discord. Um, and this is from a few days ago. So you, uh, you can see 3.9 is when I updated. So again, yesterday morning. The highlighted ones are for the Edwards Challenge. The non-shading is Zion. And what I did is I took our price guess that we used for the expected value calculator um, prior to the packs being dropped. And then seeing, okay, where was their value from the current prices to what we thought they were? Um, and then we continue to adjust as we learn and we see, okay, so specifically for these five that have slash 4,000 rookies, the multiple usually looks to be about, you see 1.46, 1.15 is the range. And then Halliburton was just a complete outlier. For whatever reason, Halliburton's even, um, you know, his moment here was going for significantly less than his slash 4,000. He was the only one of that. It told me that early on, just, uh, you know, people weren't baking in the utility value of these rising stars for the Zion challenge. Um, Because as you can see, the Anthony Edwards ones are almost all here with the lower value. The top six are all for the Zion. So that told me that, hey, there was a buying opportunity there. And then I think you combine that with our larger analysis around how we expected that uh, there was going to be that drop in the market due to the supply and the 90 minute, uh, you know, the two hour, the 90 minute limits but that they would be going up. So I think I ended up buying about three Halliburtons and then a few others on here as well. Um, and it'll be a decision whether or not I use it to complete the challenge because for the challenge, I think the cost to acquire them all is right now around like eight to 10,000. And again, I have the Zion reward um, you know, significantly lower than that. We can go into that for another day, but uh, this is at least just how I was starting my process uh, for this. Great stuff. It's been it's been interesting to see, and I think that we've seen pretty clearly the the series two commons and even the series one commons are are suffering a bit at the expense of of these challenges. And that's that's what I'm really trying to wrap my head around, right? Is this concept of the the shiny new toy, and is there just going to be another shiny new toy in a week, in two weeks, and is that going to then we'll see money liquidate out of the rising stars and out of the seeing stars? That that that's you know we're hitting kind of a a new era within Top Shot where we've seen an influx of supply that that we have not seen over the past month, two months that we've been, I guess two months at this point that we've been doing this. So it's kind of unprecedented times and we'll we'll be more informed for the next times. One one specific thing I wanted to touch on briefly and then we can talk very quickly about the the kind of new supply that came into the system, but is Lamello. Because to me, Lamello has always been an interesting one prior to all of these new moments being released, LaMelo's common price absolutely skyrocketed. I think if I recall correctly, he was close to like 7K at one point, I believe. He was at least 5K. I think he got close to seven, if not more. And so now the the first moment LaMelo is down at, I'm looking right now, low ask of 2,789. So he's come way, way down. And then we have the Rising Stars LaMelo. So keep in mind, the original LaMelo will get the, the, what, the triple badge because it's his first game. First moment and the rookie. Now we have, and that's out of four thousand. Now we have this new Rising Stars Lamelo, which is out, which is a rare. It's out of two thousand twenty-one, so about half the supply, and that's going for for four thousand nine hundred ninety lowest ask. So almost two x what we're seeing with the Lamelo, which and part of utility has utility value and and utility with the challenge, right? And and what I'm thinking about, right, is like okay, the the hot topic of two weeks ago was the Cool Cats Master Challenge, and oh, this Lamelo is going to be so valuable because Lamelo is valuable. And now it's like, well, wh- there might be more Master Challenge Lamellos than than even this 
rising stars Lamelo. So is is that going to be less valuable than what we're seeing with the rising stars? And and I don't I don't know the answer, but what I what I do know or what I do think is that think about the people that that own this Lamelo, or maybe not so much now, but over the past couple of days, right? It's people that were fortunate enough to get a rising stars pack. They may or may not be serious collectors, serious investors in Top Shot. They may just be those people that are looking to get that pack, flip their Lamello for 4,000, 4,200, 4,500, and they're thrilled with that. And, and that's fine. But what I think is that the people that complete the master challenge for that Lamello are going to be much more of the long term collector, long term investor. And I, I don't see those people, you know, just going through all of that time, effort, and investment to, complete that master challenge only to put LaMelo up for, for 4,000 after the fact. So kind of the, the, you know, weak hands versus strong hands would be one thing that, that I'm curious about when it comes to that master challenge. Cause I think it's just going to be people that are, are a lot more strong handed, a lot more in this for the long term. But with that said, I mean, I think the days of thinking that that LaMelo was going to be like 15 K that's, that was probably never, never correct. And again, it, it's all due to things that we we could not have foreseen coming. But uh, I'll be curious to see when all is said and done of these three lamellos, which which ends up being the lamello in terms of, you know, his long term valuable rookie moment. Well, there's probably going to be a legendary that will actually be it. True. But that I mean, if you compare the what we saw with Zion and Ja for those like that might have a minimum price of seventy five hundred thousand dollars. Right. Uh, so like, People are, I've also heard like people being concerned, like, are we even going to value these because there's going to be a legendary? Like, yeah, there's going to be a legendary and it's probably going to be what out of 99. Um, that's not going to impact the others. Now, this 2001 definitely does impact that future one because now it becomes the uh, most rare of the common ones, you know, not the real common, like of the general ones. Yeah. Um, so we, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I think. The fact that Luca is still such a valuable um, like player, I think, really helps um, from, a, from a sustainability standpoint. Uh, I do think when the other you know CCs start happening, there's going to be some bullish tendency and kind of pendulum swinging a little back. Um, whether or not that many people complete the CC three, I think some people have a sour taste in their mouth. But just the attention it gets is going to be a positive. And then also got a bake in like, hey, we still have a half an NBA season. And so if we're able to get increased, you know, amount of people into this ecosystem, uh, that's going to bring everything up. And especially for people who are now trying to start a new challenge that may be the cheapest challenge. CC3 might be the cheapest challenge that people have access to. It should be. Um, and maybe those people are then going to have increased interest to want to be, you know, getting the cool cats. Yeah. All righty. I think we're, we're close to, to wrapping things up here. Did want to touch definitely, at least briefly on kind of the, all the new supply that was was pumped into the system over the past couple of days. We also have the pre-order packs that are still to hit accounts. So that's just going to be another influx of supply. And I, I mean, really at the end of the day, right, this this whole game of NBA Top Shot is is kind of a a pure free market. Obviously there's there's been some some changes and some rules implemented here and there, but for the most part, the 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 demand is and the price is determined by the people that are are willing to sell the moments that they have, and the the price that is paid is purely determined by how much a buyer out there is willing to pay for a given moment. And I think it's just it, it's important to understand kind of the the basic principles of supply and demand. And I think particularly what we want to talk about is is what is the the impact of this massive amount of supply that has been injected into the top shot system. What are the impacts short term, medium term, long term? How, how, if at all, should it be impacting our strategies and, and how we're thinking about this thing? Yeah. And I think, I mean, it goes back to this formula that we referenced before for the market to continue to appreciate. For and this isn't for Dapper Labs to be successful and Top Shot to be successful because they can be very successful with collectors, you know, just paying fees and not actually increasing their portfolio. Uh, but for the market to overall appreciate and for our value to appreciate, the formula is we need more money in than money withdrawn plus money to Dapper Labs. And so what we're seeing right now is if when these new packs come out, 
yes, the fourteen dollars, whatever the, the small amounts that go to Dapper Labs, and the end is not that in, not that consequential. It's fairly inconsequential. Uh, what is relevant is when people are wanting to complete the challenges that are of company that which those cost between what we're seeing like four k now for some of the seeing stars, for the rising stars, you're seeing eight to ten k. Where does that money come from? Because if that money comes from people selling their S1, selling their S2, selling their other moments, that's going to take an impact and hurt the market. If they're bringing new money into the ecosystem, then you know we're actually it's actually improving overall because now we're getting new higher value moments and we're not hurting and it's not coming at the expense of the S1, S2. Um, and eventually, a lot of new money in will be a combination of collectors who love the product and want to continue to invest and you know put money in as well as new people joining the ecosystem. And the problem is that latter point has been kind of put on hold. We haven't seen the amount of user growth because Dapper Labs has kind of put a bit of a pause on it. I'm not sure how many people are being accepted or how that kind of goes. But I mean, we do know that there have been some limitations from a technical stance from Dapper Labs that is preventing them from reaching that level of scale of the actual you know, market demand or even you know, actual paid marketing. Uh, so overall, I think this is more of a short-term impact. Um, I think the way that I'm kind of thinking about things is my short, medium, long. So from a short, I think the play is the challenges. I think that's the opportunity to really uh, you know, get the, the best uh, you know, expected value from your flips and stuff playing that game. I think from a long-term stance, it's probably still S1s and then first moments of players and probably rookies of players that are going to be successful, uh, the rookies that you know actually hit. And then the medium term is probably what's in between. Maybe that ends up being the short-term rookies and seeing trying to get ahead of the curve on them. Uh, the ones that I'm probably most skeptical of is what happens to an S2, S2 superstars or S2, you know, non-LeBron, but some of the really better players because a lot of the argument is, oh, well, they're great players. They're always going to have their moments. But when we see a lot more of those same players coming in, how do those hold up? And that's why I think from a long term, I'm even more confident. I want to have S1, I want to have rookies, and I want to have first moments because those will always be unique. Um, beyond that is where I've got to decide, okay, it's probably more of a short-term or medium play. And I'm trying to just kind of play the top shot game. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's it's going to continue to evolve. We're con going to continue to see new moments coming out for all of these different players, like you said. And we've seen clear impact. We talked about the Lamello, right? When, when more moments are added for an individual player, it's going to impact their kind of overall market cap. And, and there's going to be a little bit of dilution that happens across the board. So we're going to continue to try and nail down those kind of short, medium, long-term opportunities. We'll be talking about that in our Discord as new strategies come up or, or new thoughts come up. And yeah, excited for for another week of Top Shot here. I think it's going to be nice. It, it seems at least like this weekend is going to be a little bit little bit more laid back, a little bit more relaxing after a, a crazy, crazy weekend and last weekend for All-Star. And, and I, think that, I think that's fine. I think we you know, allow the market to kind of settle in allow the, the people that wanted to sell to get their sales, allow the people that want to be able to buy up additional moments out of value to buy those up. And I think that uh, we're really going to hit a, a new stable point here. And I'm excited to see what happens next. So, all righty. Any, any final words, Justin? I think that we've covered it all. Yeah, no, this is good. And uh, as we said, um, looking forward to continuing. I learned actually a lot from a couple of people this morning uh, in the Discord. People just kind of throwing out some analysis and some of their some bouncing some ideas back and forth. So if people are interested in that, people are interested in kind of contributing and digesting from a more kind of you know analytical version. Um, I think we're going to put the waiting list sign up in the link, you know, in the information link, whatever. If you can't find it, send us a DM and we can get you on that wait list. Um, you know, really excited to continue to chat with all of you. Yes, sir. Check out the, the wait list in the description of the YouTube video. While you're at it, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the show. And that'll do it for today. So on behalf of Justin, on behalf of Producer Coop Behind the Scenes, I am TJ Lasig, and we will see you guys next time.